We've recently built a personalized dashboard for our students in Webflow. Let me show you how it looks. So this is basically the dashboard and students can click here to see their progress and see what do they need to work on. Now, building dashboards with Webflow is something that a lot of people ask us about and this was actually a pretty fun hack to do. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how we've built this. Let's rock and roll. Hey design friends, what is up? My name is Ron Segal. Welcome back to Flux and welcome to another Webflow tutorial. This time something super popular on demand dashboards. So on this new program that we have, which is called Web Design Mastery, it's a small group that we're working on with students directly and we're working with them on their actual project to verify and make sure that they master a lot of the skills required for web design. So let me show you, this is a dashboard that they have. They can see how many of the skills we're working on them on specifically on 30 skills. And basically they can always come here to see the status of which skills they've got honed and which skills they need to keep working on. And this is an interactive dashboard that we've built with Webflow. So let's dive in to see how we've structured this and how we've made this possible. So first thing I wanna show you is how this works with the CMS of Webflow. We structure this on the CMS. So basically to begin with, we have a database of the students and for each of them, basically what we have is, um, the name of the students and we've created kind of like a unique slug for each of them. So it doesn't have, it's very, very simple. It doesn't have um, a login. It just have a very, very random slug. So nobody will be able to guess it. Um, and then we send them the, the link to this dashboard. So as you can see, this will be like app flux Academy students, and this is ran test, but each one has their individual link. And then we have here the skills, and this is basically a list of the skills they've already mastered. Now this is basically uh, a multi ref field, meaning that we have here another collection called skills. And here we basically have all the skills, just a list of all the skills. So this one, this multi ref field is just pulling from that list. And basically we can pick here which skill is, um, you know, which skill they've passed or which one they need to, they don't need to keep working on. And of course we can send from our CRM or where we're working, we can trigger a connection with Zapier to add it. Um, so when we on our systems, we check off a skill, it sends um, Webflow through the Zapier to update this custom field and then the, the um, dashboard changes. So that's it. It's basically just a list of yes, no. Have they honed this skill? Yes or no. Now let's see how this is actually updated in the, in the website. So here's the structure of the page. Basically this is the, you know, students template. So it's basically changing for each one of the students. And the way that this works, it's, is rather simple. So we have the skills here. Um, let's see where the skills are hidden. Um, basically we have here, let me go and show this. So we have all the skills hidden here. And for each skill, we actually have two images, two icons. As you can see here, we have the pass icon and the no pass icon. And just the, each one of these skills, each one of these images has what's called conditional visibility. So here in the setting for that image, you can see that it's set to conditional visibility, meaning that it will, right now I've selected the pass icon for design concept. So this um, icon will be visible only if you know, skills contain design concept. If this, uh, if skills does not contain uh, design concepts, meaning they didn't pass, it would just not show the check mark um, icon. And of course, the other one for the no pass has conditional visibility, for example, only show this image if skills does not contain hierarchy. So this is a very, very simple way to just show or show yes or no 
for these icons. So that is the first step. That is the most basic thing that we could, we could do using conditional visibility. We can just, you know, show past no path. Now where it becomes a little bit more com uh, complicated and when we did need to add a little bit of custom code is where we wanted to actually calculate how many. So for example, now you're seeing the skills for design fundamentals. So we wanted to count them. So in this case, we would need to count three. And then also we wanna show this kind of progress bar. So here's what we did and actually Bob helped us out with the custom code and he came up with a super, super brilliant way to do this. So let's go into the custom code. So initially we have two things going on. Um, basically he, what he's doing is he's counting how many um, pass icons are basically visible. So how many divs exist um, with this? And then he gets the number and he updates the number here. So this is the first thing. Let's see how this is done here in the actual, in the body tag. So we have one for the progress bar. So in the progress bar, you can see he has a function and he's counting how many divs. Langs is counting how many divs um, have this and then so basically what he's counting is how many um, divs have the title of conditional invisible. And then he's basically counting. Okay, so you have 30 skills and then out of them, let's say 15 are set to be invisible. That means 30 minus 15 will actually give the number. And then he's just putting the number in the, you know, specifically in the progress bar, but then he has it for each one of them. So here's the one for design fundamentals. He's basically counting how many divs there are, how many conditional invisibility. He's doing the calculation and he's updating the number. So this is a function that does that for each one of the modules. And then how we did the graphs. Initially, we thought about bringing kind of a graph library, but it was too complex. And Bob had really, really simple and brilliant idea. Because basically we have for each one of the models, just six skills. So basically he used this kind of arc as a mask and inside of it, he basically put a rectangular. So depending on how much you rotate this rectangular, that is being masked by the arc, you can basically simulate, you know, the progress because basically we have to rotate. So we have 180 degrees possible of rotation. So if I'll do 180 divided by six skills, meaning each wrote each skill is equal to 30 degrees. So basically he has, he has already counted, you know, how many skills we have that are not invisible. So all you need to do is take this number multiplied by 30 and that number you need to basically rotate the, um, you know, the, the rectangular that's being masked by the arc. So let's see where this is being done here. That's actually being done, I think, in the CSS. And uh, let's see, let's see. Yeah, so here's, this is the radar, ah, SVG. Basically he created, uh, uh, six different possible styles depending on the rot rotation. So you see if he has one skill, rotate 30 degree. If we have two skills, rotate 60 degree. If we have three skills, rotate 90 and so forth until 180. And based on what the calculation was, how many, uh, you know, um, how many we counted, we're gonna pick the right style for that box. All right, so this is basically how we've set up this dashboard. This was uh, one two day kind of hack together. And uh, again, was possible with Bob creative thinking about how to work this with a very simple custom code. If you wanna learn more about how to do stuff like that with Webflow, feel free to uh, join the waitlist for our Webflow Masterclass and let us know in the comments what you'd like to us to do more tutorials on here on YouTube. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.